It's it's hello 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 hey gamers and welcome to Dungeon Discourse. Haven't said that in a while. Yo, it's been about two months since we did the last discourse, and it is new and improved. Same segments as before, but I added a few extra ones, you know, to, to freshen the, the the format up a little bit. It's actually been growing a bit, a little bit, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, we got Piper, Abby, Laura, Sassy. Welcome on in, y'all. Um, the format is very similar to what it was before. There's just some extra, like, uh, some, some new segments added to the show to diversify it a little bit and not just be a continuous loop of us yapping about our campaign, but just, like, breaking it up in with some with some other stuff. Belle is a cutie, you're too stinky. Belle is probably the stinkiest of us all, Piper. Oh, Lies! Know. Belle reeks. I've met Belle. How dare you? She smells Awful like smell. utter cheeks, bro. <clears throat> Who are you and why are you talking about my wife this way? <laughs> Yo, Sassy's on the fucking defense, dude. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> uh. I gotta hide real quick. Anyway, um, I had a, a little brain, uh, you know, like Jimmy Neutron, brain blast when you go a brain think, blast, think, think, and you see like this, like there's you need a brain head brain and like oh, right? nice one, nice, uh, nice. XD. I want to see if Ethan is down to make a new, like, starting soon scene for Dungeon Discourse. Or, uh, alternatively, just use Dungeon Select starting soon scene, but have, like, a like a wooden board kind of thing, like, covering Select, but, and then have Discourse. Something, I'd, I'd see. I'd, something, 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 something spicy, something, something new. So I'll, uh, I'll hit him up about that. Um, are, you ro are you rolling your eyes at Dutch's idea or your cup? I can't fucking open this fucking <laughs> puppy. This is how it broke in the first place. Good okay. job, man. This is how... Oh, okay, there you go. It. You gotta channel that market rage, did you got it? Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome on in. Uh, quick few announcements. Um, this Monday, we weren't able to do Divinity because my internet was being a fucking bell end. So we're doing Divinity right after this. So normally when Discord ends, that's it for the night. But today... Uh, we're doing Divinity for a couple of hours after, so... But you're, oh, yeah. but you're ending the stream, right? So I have two separate vods? No, I'll just, I'll just highlight um, this part. Um, the okay, good. chapters, so... True. <laughs> no, I'll highlight it so, so it's separate for you. Fuck but, you. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then okay, I can put acceptable. that highlight, I'll I can like put that highlight that. in the collection I'll for allow it. the scores, etc. Um, another announcement is that tonight, I guess E3 season, Officially begins. Sony's oh, it's doing, June, yeah, fuck. Sony's How is it doing, June? Sony's doing their state of play, and we're going to be shooting the shit on Profane's channel. Uh, midnight, my time, 11 p.m. Uh, UK. Twitch.tv slash Profane Artillery to watch shoot the shit uh, for the Sony side of things for the night. Half an hour of F announcements, Sony. sneak peeks, all that sort of thing. All that sort of I'm shit. I'm not coming. We, did, we asked in the founder chat, you didn't respond, so you're not welcome. I was just going to say, I have a feeling that you put something in the founder chat that I didn't read. Mm -hmm. But like... <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I I I don't think I've been to the Sony one. In few, We're doing uh, like, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest thingy next yes. week. Well, that June, interests me. June 9th. So if you want to sign up for that, you, you absolutely can. That's the day can. before Mario Strikers. True, it is. Hello. Um, final Which announcement. I'm not gonna be able to buy. Belle did what she promised. Yeah. There's a vod up on the YouTube. Episode 30 is now on YouTube. Belle is, Belle is starting to catch up. Can we get a fucking pog you clap in chat? For uh, for Bell, thank you. I don't think we have Paul Gu in this channel, but just type Paul Gu. Easy. No, I don't think we do. We have Paul thank Bones. You. Can we get a Paul Bones? Can we get a Paul Bones in <laughs> chat, dude? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Soko, good job, Bell. You finally did something worthwhile. Shut up. You guys don't do anything. That's because this is the twenty-fifth episode of this course, Laura. It's yep. June. Different series. Everything different Bell does numbers. is worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, <laughs> I got the joke. Good one. Good mm -hmm. one. Good one. Very good. What joke? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm <sighs> you can even make a decision to save your life, Soko. Shut the fuck up. True. I mean, he did make decision to to. He made the move. decision to golf, having broken his elbow recently. So that's. Hey, he accepted a new he's... job and has to move to fucking Florida for. That's a pretty decision big decision, making. right? Yeah, but he asked us what we should do before. Him. That's Before fair. Made a that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I can't make a decision. You guys decide for me. Quoting exactly. 
Y'all, should I go to Tampa? <laughs> <laughs> Tampa's in Florida. I think it is, right? Tampa's in Florida. Right? Yeah. 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 Dude, that's perfect. Because Soko is like the biggest Florida stand out there. Y'all, we have that clip of Soko like hyping the fuck out of Florida. Remember he that, loves though? Florida. You have, I think you put that in one of the highlight reels, maybe. Soko's going to be like the only person who loves Florida. Maybe he didn't. But like, it was this clip. No. We were talking about Florida and, and Soko's like, they don't got taxes. They golf. <laughs> like, he just like went off on how lit they got Florida gators. Is. They got gators. I mean... <laughs> Soko is the most Florida man I have ever met. Soko is a Florida man. <laughs> like, absolutely, a hundred percent. A few months from now, we'll see a Florida man article Can't and just wait. see fucking Soko's like head some muck shots in there. Can't wait. <laughs> they got amusement parks. The golf balls. I love how you said amusement parks instead of amusement. Amusement. <laughs> That's they got amusement parks. <laughs> they got amusement parks. <laughs> 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 fucking hell. Okay. Anyway, um, to start things off, a little, little recap of uh, the last session, um, which pretty much just entailed or involved you guys entering Silverkeep proper. You're on the hunt for uh, Valor, Lazarin's ally who got, um, who was a part of the Nightwebs, but was kind of like a double agent for Lazarin because he also feels like the organization has lost its roots and no longer agrees with um what they do as have several people that you've encountered so far uh they yeah. found out about it captured him and are now keeping him in silver keep uh somewhere uh you've explored the majority of the uh first floor of the keep found some secrets fought some bad guys fought uh mainly guards but also uh, a bully not a bullywug a um umber hulk uh, which was the large insect-like creature. Right. Um, Got punched to fuck by Jax. I mean, Umber Hulks are... Dude! This was supposed to be a pretty hard fucking encounter. But, like, it had an, an AC of 18 and none of you missed an attack. Maybe, like, what, say maybe like once or twice. Like, it was crazy. I expected you guys to miss a lot more attacks. Not gonna lie. Because AC 18 at level 5 is pretty fucking... That's beefy. You know what I mean? The dice I think were I... Okay, though. I deck saved it right and hit it. That was something. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much the recap of uh, last session. Um, for the purposes of this, because we haven't done a discourse in a while, can I just get your y'all's thoughts on the last like handful of sessions? Say, let's say since Davian completed his like Kosuth journey, we'll go with Duke that's first. A, that's a long way back. Hmm? That's a long way back. <laughs> Cast oh, you your first. mind back. You can go first, Bill. I can go first. Yeah. Okay. So from 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 when? <laughs> from say the episode where um you fought the Abeleth and found the tear, the well, final tear, like okay. from that. So also that episode where you found out about this like disease that plagues your dad and, and that stuff, like from there. Yeah. It, I mean, coming from a cast perspective, it's been kind of nuts. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Just just up and down all over the place, but like super fun. It's just I, I don't know what's gonna get thrown at me next. I do. And the rest of the people. Yeah, well, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would be worried if you didn't know. That's a layer of level of chaos even I'm not comfortable with. I have the general idea in mind. I don't know if anything's set in stone yet, but the general idea is. just roll the dice. Mm. <clears throat> I roll dice for a lot of things that happen throughout the campaign. Like, I'll be writing down some scenarios. That's crazy, me too. Yeah, no, but like, I'll be writing down some scenarios <laughs> and then I'll roll a dice to decide which scenario is going to happen and how I make decisions. I just make up numbers. Yeah. <clears throat> the true random number generator. So it's Bell. where Bell, Bell's like short answer is it's been hyper mega poggers crazy. It, yeah. much. Like, <sighs> I gotta say, I, I'm really like. I don't know, it sucks that I missed the session immediately after getting the, the third tier, right? Yeah. Like that 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 sucked. Cause I was you know, that's that's kind of a big deal. Um that whole epic that that whole sort of sort of arc, whatever, with the Abeleth. Every time I try to think Abeleth, the word Shibboleth comes into my head. And like a sh the Shibboleth was that thing that throat you no. No, wait. What was his name? 
the what? Dutch, the the Frisian. Uh, pff, you know more about that guy than I do. And he's fuck. From my country. There's, there was a Frisian barbarian, and he used to say that whole butter brie, green and cheese, whatever the fuck. That is a shibboleth. That is what a shibboleth is. It's like a Then is a king. This king of the freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will. That will. I can't remember his name. Anyway, that's uh, every time I think Abeleth, I think Shibboleth. But um, <coughs> that whole arc was a little wild. And then I missed the session after, which sucks because, like, I feel like it. it uh, I didn't get the resolution with the the Triton as much as I was hoping. No. But we also didn't meet the NPC that Bell and I made. Didn't. True. Which I thought we would. Mm. Um. Funny you mentioned that. And then it was it was just like a, it was very chill, I right? I mean, like you'll meet, you'll meet them soon, <laughs> right? They're coming. It, Pirate it arc. was it was you're in the open. There water. was a lot of uh, <laughs> preparation and like planning, and we learned a little bit more about the whole <laughs> Nightweb situation with like General Kron, and we were kind of learning who we could trust, which is great because we didn't trust anybody for like. You know, weeks. That's so... one of my favorite things. Was just like when Koiba gave me that idea. I was like, okay, I'm gonna sue. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sow so much paranoia in the mix where it's like, who can you trust? Who can't you? Oh, who did yeah. you trust? And it's a mistake. And who didn't you trust at all? But oh, you can after like that entire like I fucking love that shit, dude. There's more coming. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, because the fucking devil like didn't help at all. Yeah. And that's the um... thing. He would have, because he had another rendezvous with the Lazarin. Mm-hmm. And the Lazarin fucking told him no to tell, told him to fuck off. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm sad I missed that because fucking uh, that Lazarin's a, that was a definite moment anyway. That was a bad yeah, one. I'm sure it was. Uh, yeah. So so we basically we came straight from the Triton and then it was like okay back home. Valor was the next quest objective, so it was like, yeah, it was just like straight into prep for that. We got to, we got to do the whole goblin stakeout. That was fun. The mm -hmm. warehouse. Well, well, I was quest to throw, you know. To someone keep busy. like I guess jokingly threw in there like, what if he's stealing his own shit, not knowing? And I was completely convinced that that was the bit. <laughs> like I, from that moment, I was like, that's got to be the bit. Yeah. It's because oh. like that's such a that's. So that, that, everything was could have led perfectly to exactly like that. And that's such like a little like, quirky RPG quest. I even threw in the whole like, because um, someone asked him about like, does he sometimes wander off in the night without knowing? And I threw in like, yeah, only when it's a full moon. <coughs> and then the question came. And I was like, is it a, is it a what full was, moon soon? No. What does <laughs> Prince look like? Like, are we going to be tracking his footprints to his own warehouse? I want to follow him. Um... <laughs> And we ended up like breaking two windows for yeah. no reason. Like, yeah, yeah. That, I'm like, motherfuckers, you have keys. Why are you climbing through <laughs> windows, fucking chucking rocks? You have fucking keys and there's nobody watching. Why the, the guards fuck left? Didn't you and open it's the like, fucking door? Okay, okay the guards are gone. <laughs> yeah, like, what the? You have a key? Oh my like, god, that pissed me off, dude. Holy shit. But whatever, we got we got through that. I I, I, I honestly, it was like. <laughs> Again, I was I was expecting a bigger conspiracy than just a bunch of dudes down on their luck digging under the no, warehouse. That's the thing, right? I was... Like I throw a lot of big conspiracies at you, but I, you know, not everything is that deep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This, was, this, was, this was just what it seemed on surface level, just a little side quest. That yeah, yeah that, no, 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 I no, I get it. It's just like oh, shady figures. They're stealing reagents. Maybe they're doing rituals and. There's something under the warehouse, and but no, it's just like it's just a bunch of dudes down in the lock. Oh, rip! Fucking killed like three of them or something. Yeah, four. We keep doing that. It's like like you're very violent. <laughs> you're very violent. That, we were told not to leave any survivors at at the fort, and then we yeah. did, which is nice because you know. <laughs> and then these five like, it, but... down in their luck, little fucking like. Uh... Wait, we let one of them live, right? <laughs> yeah, one this of is them. why we're one like the most lived. chaotic party because you can never guess exactly <laughs> what we're gonna do. Because we'll like kill a bunch of innocent thieves and then let a bunch of other people can't go be from predicted a really if you evil don't even know yourself. What you're doing next, Literally, yeah, it's like it's killing. one of those things. It's like okay, uh, they seemed more sinister than they were, and like by the time it was like, can we really, you know, 
maybe maybe we should relax. Um, I'd already like burned one of them to a crisp, and it's mm. like that's pretty much the worst possible way a person can go. Guess I just commit now. You know? <laughs> now we go all in. <laughs> yeah, like, Enough. hey man, hellish rebuke, pretty fucking cool spell, by the it, way. It's it's a pretty great one. Uh, and, and it's one of but... tieflings just get, by the way, from yeah. tiefling. Yeah, it's fucking dope. Yeah, but tieflings can do it like once per or long um, rest, right? Or something. It's for short rest, I think, or some shit, or maybe times there. I don't even know. There's some, yeah, Looking some bell. limitation. Right? Bell who played a tiefling. It was, like three it years. was once per long rest, I think. Once per long right. rest. Okay. Whereas, <clears throat> I mean, if I've got spell slots, dude, it's, it's just a reaction. Like fucking, mm. come at me, I'll set you ablaze. I was pu yeah. I, that last fight. I feel like I was pumping damage. I don't, I don't really remember. Burning hands has let me down. <laughs> Cause like I visualize burning hands to be like it's like a freaking flamethrower, but it's no, it's, it's more like it's you know it's like, it's like Igni in The Witcher. It's like a short little. Well, right, right, sure, but it's like it's a cone, and I'm hitting like I'm hitting lots of people with fire, but then it's like it's three d six, and every time I roll like shit, <clears throat> so you know that's the the scale three to eighteen damage is the scale, and I've been pretty below average. You've been on every the low time. end on that that scale yeah. for sure, yeah. Even that's though. True. I'm pretty sure only one person has made the save uh, in that group. Yeah. Uh, like, like so far in my use of bunny hands, maybe six people have rolled and one person has saved. And my DC is trash. So, you know. Just wait until you get, I'm trying to get some uh, big numbers here. What's that fucking fire spell that you had in that one shot we did for Halloween? Oh, something, shit. something's scorching ray or whatever. As, as, yeah, as, uh, as, 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 some, some wizard's names fucking. It, it li literally a flamethrower. Yeah, yeah, that shit was wild. It, and it's that's, like that's a straight a line. I feel like, it's, I feel like five you'll foot wide and picking like... up as, uh, as Davian right when time comes. Yeah, I don't think it's on my spell list unless it's, it's part of the Warlocks. Oh, unless okay. unless it's in the Warlocks, I'll have to add it to the expanded spell list. Good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed the entirety and the conclusion of, of the Tears of Kasuth stuff because, you know, Agonazor's Scorcher. Thank you, Soko. Reporter in the field. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. He's chiming in. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one. I really enjoyed, because you and me, Duke, have been talking since the conception of the character, like, I want to do a Warlock multi-class, people clan. Yeah, Be before um, it was even a ranger. And then, and then it was like, okay, we're doing elemental shit. Oh, fire, man, please. Okay, yeah, yeah, fire, yeah. dope. So I had plans for, for your character to, like, have a roleplay reason to take that multi-class and we kind of talked about it a little bit to kind of be like if you were, were you okay with that blah blah how early would you want that to happen yeah, pretty early on so that i have this I have, I have a leveling range that i can pick from okay cool um but because elemental powerful elemental beings are very important in this campaign setting on this continent because the entire continent is is like, like the whole premise or the, the the premise of the continent um, revealing itself was because it was previously shrouded by mysterious thunderstorms and suddenly those storms just disappeared. And like the whole premise is you know, a big part of of, 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 of the overall overarching storyline is like finding all, all these like communities of people that worship these powerful elemental beings the fact that there's now two people in your group that have very close connections to powerful elemental beings like elemental shit and the overlying storyline will be very closely tied to the elemental planes and, and and shit like that. So I'm it's I'm hogging because through that storyline we both had the introduction of Kasuf and established him as like an important elemental being. And that storyline was also a storyline where Dell's connection to the uh, air elemental plane and the important beings in that hierarchy really was put forward like oh mm -hmm. I guess her is from this like elemental bloodline of powerful important air elementals um, so that's two out of the four elemental planes why. covered already you've been introduced to people that worship Estisha the elemental lord of water that's three so that's that's three of the four like big hitters when it comes to elementals Covered, introduced. Oh, They're man. there. They yeah. live. When? Boom. Um, the only per the only elemental plane missing was like they got mentioned, like name dropped, like once or twice, but never yeah. 
had a had a say or had a had an appearance but that is that was such a important story arc for the overlying storyline of the campaign as a whole that i'm planning um that obviously for me is pog because i know kind of semi what the overlying storyline is so for me and and also in hindsight like 50 sessions from now you're gonna look back and be like yo that story arc in particular set all of this in motion kind of thing so... i also didn't know about the importance of the elemental planes for campaign two when i made Cass. Like yeah, it's even better. Side point. <laughs> I had no idea. Did, really? No, I had I, no. I, we just clue. talked about like, you know, yeah, talked about like I that think... there's gonna be a lot of elemental forces in play, but that's about it. Yeah, I think I think there was like some idea that the sort of closeness to the sort of origin of the elements was like pretty strong on the continent. Yeah, probably to because of its like solitary, it's kind of isolated nature. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, okay, there's there's gonna be some fire elemental fire elemental like shit that I can I can roll with here. Like I can't remember originally what I said, but basically something along the lines of like Kosuth was like put there by a dragon when the what well, like when what like the sundering happened or whatever the fuck. So Yeah, and like like way, way, way back in the beginning, like of campaign one, when I was writing the world lore, I described this like pre uh sundering elemental uh, war against the dragons, and that now that we live uh, on a, in a place where elementals are very important, I get I get to like do a lot more exposition on that whole part of the history of the realm as a whole that I wasn't really yeah. able to shoehorn in in the previous campaign, which is fucking dope because I love me some like world building history of uh, you know what I mean. I want the campaign or the the, the setting to be more to to have more going on than what is currently being played. There is a history. And now I've got the Triforce. <laughs> Pretty <so>. much. <laughs> yeah. It's... I don't know. I, I... It's really cool with the wording of certain things, particularly like Favored Foe, that's like... Favored Foe <laughs> doesn't specify weapon attacks, so I can use Favored Foe on Eldritch Blast and like... The... Um imbue elemental power also like i can use that with eldritch blast i can use it with my bow so like there's so many cool i don't know synergies so far with like what i've got so far as ranger and what i've got to begin with with warlock and mm -hmm. i learned <clears throat> that things like cantrip damage scale off your total character level not, not class level, class level. Yeah. so i'm getting i got like <clears throat> create bonfire that does like 2d8 damage just as a just out of nowhere yeah, and eldritch blasts that, that double is, eldritch uh, blasts instead and, of one beam it's two yeah. yeah which is super cool i mean i don't know why you would ever use create bonfire as opposed to eldritch Bla <laughs> oh it's a no it's a save instead of a roll to hit yeah which is why i used it on that guy that was directly in front of me because i would have had disadvantage because it was a ranged spell attack and if someone's in your melee you have disadvantage yeah, plus if you, if you, you find out that motherfuckers have really high AC, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll use a saving throw thing instead. Yeah, we'll go for the saving throw instead. Or vice versa. So my you're... brain's huge, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's time for the first new segment of uh, new segment. of Dungeon Discourse, which I called D&D Tweet of the Week. So I'll be scouring D&D Twitter to find a certain like tweet that I liked where I was like, oh, that's a good one to, to bring forth to the show. And we're going to talk about it. And in this case, uh, World Anvil tweeted what does dm slash gm stand hand. for wrong answers only dummy so mommy I, <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on i i want to highlight two responses that i thought were pretty funny uh, one of them was by george sanders underscore disaster mitigation slash global maintenance which i feel like yeah, is pretty accurate when it comes to D, &D right <laughs> disaster <laughs> it's pretty accurate. mitigation it's pretty accurate <laughs> okay and one that just gave me a chuckle, and I don't know why, is uh, Distress Mayhem or Global Misunderstanding. I don't know, I thought it was funny. Um, so now my question mayhem. to you, to both of you, you know, separately, we go one at a time. What does DM slash GM stand for? Wrong answers only. Okay, I'll go first. Dommy Mommy slash Grand Milf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Milf has taken Dommy me Mommy out. slash Grand <laughs> Milf. Okay. 
<laughs> got it. Got it. <laughs> All right, Bell. What does DM slash GM stand for? Wrong answers only. Oh, now all I can think of is fucking Grand <laughs> It's like the only thing in my head. Maybe she <laughs> ADHD that go first, just huh? like latched onto that. <laughs> and so it's just like echoing in my head. <laughs> like I can't think of anything else. Oh, I don't know. You're talking about our DM. It's difficult man, <laughs> great mind. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. Yeah, that's pretty mm. true, dude. Yeah, that's pretty true. Pretty true, guys. It's true. Grand Milf. Okay, so that was not an answer because all you can say is Grand Milf. I literally don't have an answer because that's all I can hear in my head. Uh, hmm. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other good ones in that thread? I'm dying to hear some. I'm dying to hear some from like you know greater minds than mine. Mm. Uh, well, the thing is, World Anvil doesn't have that big of a reach on 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 Twitter, so the um... <laughs> way to call them out, dude. No, Shit. What you're saying? there's not, there's not <laughs> that Fucking many hell. responses, but I'll have a little look see to see if I can find, if I can find some more. Fucking wow, dude. Just let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh. A lot of German shit, which I guess is World Anvil German. I don't even know. Maybe Deutschmeister. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, one pretty fucking close to yours, Duke. Delta Milf, Gamma Milf. <laughs> I don't know what Gamma what could be. What the f- wait, wait, wait. I, well, I said that like I know what Delta is, but no, I don't know what Delta is either, frankly. Uh, Dragon Midwife, Gigantic Mime. Uh, Delirious Mess, Grant Machinations. That's a good one. That's a good that one. is a good one. That is a really good that one. That is a good one. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Mike. <laughs> yeah? Like the YouTuber? <laughs> uh, general Mediator Dork Manifestation? God, these are, dude, these people like play Scrabble. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dutch Dad's Mexican. money, grandma's money. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, yeah, Dice yeah. Mogul Grumpy Megalomaniac. Oh. Oh, yeah, the last one is pretty accurate. Mm, Dog Magnet Gerbil Master. Mister? What? Like Master. Not Mister. Master, <laughs> master of Gerbils. Whatever. It's like the Pied pi Piper of Hamlin. Diabolical <laughs> Monster, Great Manipulator. That's me! The last one. The size. Um, <clears throat> let's see. After dealing them a bunch of damage, I almost had a player comment that DM suit for Dick Muncher. Yeah, fair. It's fair. Honestly, it's fair. Happy Pride Month. Um, yeah. So that's the first segment of uh, of the new segment of, of discourse. I just want to weekly go go through the indie Twitter and just find a fun tweet to talk and have some discourse my, about. Dude, my brain is like is really trying to. I'm the M. Like like I'm really trying. It's like. All good. The, the dreaded, like, dreaded maker, gaslight manipulator. <laughs> that's, that's the same thing, isn't it? Gaslight, gatekeep, <laughs> go like, boss. That is, that is, that is, that is two sides of the same coin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some might even say it's, both of them is one side. Mm. Um, okay. Depends on how you prefer to manipulate people. <clears throat> Dangerous masturbator, good one, Abby. That's a good one. That nice. is a good one. We all we all know a dangerous masturbator here, and it's not me or Bell. <laughs> <laughs> is it the sandpaper involved? No. Oh. That's the danger. That is pretty dangerous. All right. <clears throat> um, we'll move on to viewer questions. We have a couple. Uh, first one is from Laura, and this one is um, for Duke in particular. Oh. As Davian levels, will he err more heavily on the Warlock or Ranger side? Oh, we will. We will have to see what the campaign 
has in store because honestly um initially i was thinking like it's probably going to be primarily ranger like uh, honest with the way like with the way stuff scales and like what i have access to now there's not much like push to really level warlock at all but i don't really know like yeah i don't we'll we'll see because I think it, it'll come down to like when it gets to when it gets to leveling time, you know what what the deal is. Have I been more of a ranger or more of a warlock for the past level? Because like so far, you know, a few sessions into being a warlock, like pretty much all I'm doing is throwing fireballs. Like that, that's that's it. Yeah. Like I'm spitting fire really on this like track. Getting, like really getting to know your new found ability, so it would make yeah. sense. That you develop them more because you're using them a lot and getting to know them to advance to that to second level, next level <laughs> instead of ranger. Like yeah. so close, they're probably going to be more of a warlock on the ocean. But I know that like I want to work on like navigating and map making and like the general sort of sense of exploration and like all that sort of stuff. I you know is kind of on the Pretty ranger side of things with, tra with ranger. Yeah. yeah. So you know even if it's not like martial combat, it's like that essence of of mm -hmm. you know the ranger sort of career as i've written it in the backstory of just being like they're explorers and they they track but they also make maps and they keep shit safe and all that sort of thing so so that like i mean you know you're not in the woods on the ocean but it's still like the dangerous wilderness and now i'm thinking i kind of want to make a sea ranger at some point that sounds pretty cool <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's really going to depend, like, a little bit, like, I'd say 50% story and 50% usage and application is really, like, how I'm going to choose to level it up. Because, like, yeah, if Davian is, is primarily, like, using his Warlock skills, then his Warlock abilities are going to improve. So it only makes sense to level that up. But also... The hardest part is, like, I know I need to improve my Charisma. Davian's pretty well rounded, so it's like really easy to role play him because it's like he's not exceptionally bad or exceptionally good at one thing that I have to Jack kind of, of all exaggerate. Jack of all trades, none kind of thing. Yeah, so there's no traits that I have to sort of exaggerate when role playing him. But if I want Warlock <laughs> to be applicable, like I need to improve his charisma, and there's like it's hard to really find like like story role play reasons that he would just become more charming or whatever to improve being a better warlock so that, that's that's probably the biggest struggle decision wise <clears throat> okay i have a question that i want to throw at bell hey um how much of kess's chaotic bullshit is predetermined and how much of it is you just being a fucking twat <laughs> thinking of shit okay, on the fly so like like, what part of her chaotic bullshit are you Just driving at? The past... Fuck. The entire campaign, Kess has <laughs> come up with these, like, weird situations that she supposedly has been in. Or just some decisions that she made that just don't... Like, what? why would any sane person choose to do this or want this? I just want to see if I can get a grasp of, like, how much of that is predetermined, like... Kess's character, and how much of that is you is just like thinking of something funny on the fly and adding it in because it's it fits Kess's chaotic character. Um. <clears throat> so like her her decisions, like like the bigger decisions, tend to be pretty like predetermined, and like I've kind of thought about them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like the random anecdotes that she just comes up with. Like letting, like setting a bunch of chickens loose in a high priestess's house. That was just made up on the fly. Um, like the the fucking blue wand thing. That was just complete bullshit. Um, but like that there are there are there are stories that I know like in my head that I can just like drop at any moment that I know she's probably gone through. Um, and and then there is just random stuff I make up, which is mostly. Like what it is but i have kind of basic um i have like small rules of like what she experienced in the fair wild compared to like how much of it <laughs> there is to experience gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. like a very narrow corridor 
because obviously it's a, it's a it's a plane, so like she hasn't experienced everything in it. Um, just that, like there's this whole new continent on the material plane. Like they obviously haven't experienced everything on their plane either, so it wouldn't make sense. But like her, most of her random stories tend to be pretty made up and just like off the cuff. Um, but then there are also moments like where she'll just kind of drop something that I didn't plan that to drop like that early. I mean, mm -hmm. like like the mock of Shadow Elf thing. I didn't I didn't plan for that to happen as early as it did. But then she offered like a safe haven for General Khan to go to, and she was basically at this point just like, ah, the game's up. They're gonna know I'm from the Fair World because otherwise, how do I know this specific place she can go, and how am I able to like write letters that need to go ahead of time? So that's why she revealed it, because she was like, at this point, they're going to ask eventually, and I'd rather be in control of that narrative than be <clears> on the back foot. Okay. How would you think S would react if, hypothetically, uh, this is genuinely hypothetically, not something mm -hmm. that I'm determining or anything, just hypothetically, just curious. If one day the situation arises where you as a group need to go to the Feywild, I would I would Kess react to that in like gut reflex reaction. Kess would be down for it, but she'd switch from like this very bubbly kind of spontaneous, doesn't really have a care in the world person <laughs> to very serious and very like attentive and very much following a set of rules, because she's suddenly in an area where she has a little bit more history. <laughs> And there's like more of a reason for her to be concerned than like in this entirely new space where to her the, the worst thing that can happen is she gets exiled again so like she, she would go for it but she'd be almost an entirely different person as soon as she sets foot in that plane again which i think would be interesting but it, it would be it would be a definite shift Absolutely. i have a, a follow-up question <laughs> So, for just this is just talking about that fucking story with the chickens, right? So, is Kess making that up, or did it? Are you? I know you are making it up on the spot, but are you like writing it into a history as you say it, or is it literally Kess talking shit? Well, all the little anecdotes. Yeah. Some of them I definitely have like put into her history, and then some of them I kind of like discard as like little jokes she says so the ones that are like really short and totally random those ones tend to be made up but like the right. chickens for example going back to that example that 100 percent happened in a backstory yeah. now okay. that's 100 percent something she has done because <laughs> i think i think everyone sort of i mean you know no one writes every <laughs> iota no. of detail into the character's backstory no. so yeah it adds a little life when you make up stories like that and you're just like yeah no that happened that's in the history yeah, yeah that 100 yeah. percent happened yeah, and like okay. sometimes she'll say something kind of like that's that's just a little bit weird like when she was talking about the healing spider and she's like i've seen actual spiders do this that's to me that's something she's 100 percent seen in the paywall okay okay <laughs> vaguely at some point <laughs> i feel like Amen. i feel like that would be like a, a spider could web a wound shut i was gonna yeah. say guess would see like a spider beginning to web like Prey up, but because it's webbing up, yeah, exactly. The like it's, first, it's, it looks like the spider is bandaging yeah, it. Well, in, well in reality, exactly. That's, it's that's kind of like meal, it's meal prepping yeah, for later. It's absolutely. <laughs> like, she sees little glances and then just turns the meaning into something entirely else, just because it like just save myself from having to make up a new monster that is a healing spider. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good job me. <sighs> <laughs> just use our dog. Uh, I got another question for Duke from Abby this time. Oh, Paul's uh, champ. Because this is because you were fucking memeing about the abyss bound chest for the <laughs> longest fucking time. Uh, yeah, what about How it? How desperate is Davian to talk to the abyss bound chest? Uh, I, I will add the word again because you've done it before. Instead of dungeon yeah. crawling, and what does he expect to happen if slash when he ever gets a chance to? That's okay, to well, target. I mean, I mean, okay, using the abyss bound chest as a a metaphor or MacGuffin. Okay, mm -hmm. when it comes to Duke's attitude to exploring dungeons, okay? <laughs> because there's always there's always like a a kind of like yes, I'm playing a character, but I'm in control of the character. So like it's it, it, it's I know 
that my man sitting across from me, uh, hypothetically, uh, metaphorically, uh, has spent a lot of time putting detail into these dungeons, right? They're going to be packed with, you know, every nook and cranny is going to have something. And I'm, as a player, I'm a completionist. Like, I want to see every, every inch of that dungeon, okay? So, when it comes to something like the Abyss-bound chest, I'm like... Davian, okay, he's an explorer. He does have a curiosity. The thing is that he is pr he's generally, when it comes to decision making, usually pretty practical and like pragmatic and not a big risk taker, right? So it's like, it's more me than Davian a lot of the time. It's like, let's, let's go in this room and talk to this mysterious chest that could teleport us to the abyss or whatever. Like, because in my head, I'm like, yeah, Dutch isn't going to fucking dunk us in the abyss at level three or whatever. And if he does, I'm sure there's 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 going to be something to it that isn't going to instantly kill us or whatever. So it's like, it's kind of that inner turmoil of like, when, especially when dungeon delving, Davian's risk taking is a little more on the sort of severe side because <laughs> I, as a player, want to kind of... I guess humor Dutch's <laughs> time spent crafting dungeons generally. But I think to say, like, is Davian eager to interact with a chest that could, you know, basically destroy his life in an instant? Like, he's not he's not too keen to do that, you know? It, 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 he's got a curiosity that might be piqued, but also... You know, like getting locked in a room with the thing, like that that's a little that's a little far, you know. <laughs> no way. Okay. Uh, Laura also put a question in chat for me for later because she forgot to post it in Discord. Uh, was the Umber Hulk there intentionally from the Spider Gang or did they know uh, did they not know it was another fort? Uh they didn't know. Uh, the Umber Umber Hulks typically live way deeper down underground. They're 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 underdark creatures, but every once in a while they they got tremor sense and they are predators so they just feel where the shakies are and are like oh food is there and when they were the the idea was that because they are digging into the ground expanding the fort the tremors that that digging that excessive digging and repeated digging created reached a little further down than you know normal foot travel would so the umber hulk picked that up and was like Food, and eventually dug his way into that part of the fort and made it his home. I think even in this session I was like, is it an underdark thing? But I scuffed my nature roll. It is. It is. That's that's the reason uh, that Umber Hulk was there, pretty much. Um, just an accident, really, if you think about it. Um, those are the questions that we have. Uh, do you two have any questions for me? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I think Ethan put a few in the... Well, he's board. fucking late. I already started the show, so I don't have access to this. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll quickly open uh, this one. Oh. Submit them before the show, guys. You had a fucking two months. Okay. Um, hold. <laughs> hold. I'm going. For Duke. How is Davian feeling about his newfound powers now that he's began to settle into them? Fucking pog bones, dude. He can throw fire. He can throw fire. He, he, uh, he's already just running in and putting himself in danger so that he can throw fire more, you know? Got the shit kicked out of him last session. But, some of the bonfire under a dude's ass, burning hands like four of them at once, freaking uh, hellish rebuked one right in the mouth. It, it, it's great, you know? I think you hellish rebuked the same guy twice. Pretty sure i might that happens yeah i think so that's fucked up dude yeah it's pretty <laughs> fucked up 10 out of 10. because like the same guy fucked What's you up with his long sword twice and you yeah. were like had a rebuke every time like fuck yeah him. and he scuffed the save both times i think as well i think so yeah <laughs> um oh your time yeah will come no through, it, it's 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 just it's just great i mean like as a player also i mean you know i spent like a year to it wasn't quite two years that I was in the end of campaign one, was it? As um, again, but full spellcaster from like joining the campaign at like seventh level. I had so many spells. Year, year and a half. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and then going from that to a ranger and being like, hmm, I can cast Hunter's Mark? So it's pretty nice to have some, some magic again. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Fair enough. Um, for Belle, how was Kess feeling after her recent tension with the group? She's kind of devastated. <laughs> She keeps, like, doing, she keeps doing it. Man. She keeps doing it, and she knows she kind of is just doing it to herself. But like, she is she is actually kind of devastated about it. She is also surprised that like Brooks isn't as mad at her as she expected he would be at that point. But she do she doesn't feel great about it. Like with the 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 emotions from Summon Shadowspawn, that's just like flavor I added for fun. The whole like emotion affecting her. Um. But like it, it was a hundred percent true. Like she does, she she is kind of like in complete despair that these feet, this this little group, specifically Dagon, is kind of just like, hmm, we should reassess this person that we're spending time with, considering that there's an entire facet of them that has been hidden this whole time and doesn't <laughs> quite understand the, the threat of that on mm -hmm. the others. Uh, to to kind of latch on to the discussion going on in chat about, you know, the I as a DM would something different. Um, I personally would make it clear enough that there is a way out if you manage to get yourself into a situation that you aren't supposed to win. So, for instance, if the Umber Hulk was powerful enough that I knew it would easily wipe you... I would give you ample indication throughout roleplay or looking at your surroundings or whatever. Say you fight the Number Hulk, right? Uh, but I'm like, they're not designed to win this fight. I would probably be like, oh, much passive perception. Oh, you notice that there is this very large like iron gate with a lever on your side uh, to block off that hallway or yeah. whatever. Some way that you can avoid the encounter without having to fight it. That, that's kind of how I would do it. Um, if I don't intend for you to win, there will be an out. That will be, that will always be. Yeah, because what would be the point of putting us in a situation that we yeah, aren't exactly. intended to win in the first place? Unless if you it then choose to like... ignore that out, that is on you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like that is on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, did the party enter the fort in the way you expected, or did they? Have, did you have other idea? <laughs> did you have other ideas? Um, well, I expect you to go to the front door, because it's the only inn there was. Because it's fort, it's very, very heavily defended. It's very fortified. Fortified. Uh, you even went asking, uh -huh. were like, there's no way to dig yourself in through the floor because of how heavily fortified it is. You're going in through the front door. That's the only choice you got. What I didn't expect was you guys were going to just fucking blow up a keg of gunpowder and blow through the port. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. That was pretty fucking dope. Cool. That was, that was sick. Fun. Um, so, as of... Point I almost entry? fucked it too. Oh my god, I just remembered shooting the fire arrow and you're like, um... Well... Yeah, I just ten? wanted it to succeed, man, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it's like, yeah... You're just trying to hit the damn thing, like, it's you're not a trying, stationary yeah, you're, you're, I feel like it sounds logical, you're not trying to break yeah, the right, wood, right, you're right, trying right. to have it catch on fire, so all you need is for the arrow to stick into the wood for long enough for the flame to catch over. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like, so as far as, like, entry point... Yes, expected you to go through there because it's the only way in. Way of getting to set entry points? Did not expect you guys to go that route, but I'm glad you did because it's fucking sick. <laughs> it was so much fun. <clears throat> okay, now we've had all questions. Yes. Um, I want to go to the second new segment of what? the show. Uh, it is D&D &D What Ifs. I'm going to present you with a series of uh, what-if questions that all have some relation to Dungeons & Dragons. And I want you guys to answer separately. So, first one. You learn, you wake up one day and learn that you are in a real-life D&D game, but you are the DM. What is the first thing you would do? Duke. Wait, 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 wait. So you wake up one day, it's yeah. real life, but it turns out that... Your real life is a D&D &D game, and you are the DM. What is the first thing you would do? But I'm a player character? Like, what? Oh, you're the DM. But if I'm as the in, DM... As in, you control... I... You control... Life. But I'm in your it. Your world. Also. Yes, 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 you are. 
I guess you are player characters, but also the DM. Sure, whatever. What is the first thing you would do? I I would just try to do some magic. I, like if we if we're talking like if we're in D and D D and D, I would try to do some magic. I don't know. Magic's okay. so fucking cool. Let me cast Mordekainen's Magnificent Mansion just the one time, just to see what the deal is with that. In your bedroom, you know, like. Oh, wait, well, no, 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 no it's not. It's the a door, right? In yeah, the bedroom, it's a door, you know, but... I was thinking yeah, of a, like, there's an item that like lets you just shit out of fucking forts. It's like where you are. You know. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. It's just like I, I don't know, like the whole the the whole thing that really en it, like enraptured me with D and D was like the magic, you know, because we all played RPGs. I got into D and D pretty late, and I, you know, I've played at that point. You know, played like The Witcher and fucking. Pillars of Eternity or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, you know, in video games, magic is pretty much always like the the it, it's fit for a specific purpose in a combat situation, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Like, and unless we're talking, way you know, to it, yeah. There there might be like charm spells that you could use in conversation or something, but yeah, also like, like they'll work in combat to make people fight for you or something like that. So yeah. like that's always been the context of magic, like, I would say the majority of cases. So when you play D&D &D and it's like, you can just, you can make an item warm or clean or taste different. And I'm like, this is the best shit ever. Like, <laughs> this is like genuinely magical. Like, it, it, that whole idea of like... Of magic that isn't just for combat. Uh... Talking to animals, fucking summoning mansions literally making a fort right there's like a spell that makes a fortress or something like uh there's a magic item that lets you just like it's like a small cube you put it on the ground and just like this fucking 20 foot like I think, tower i think there's a spell but it it takes like a year you have to cast it every day there is there is you have to cast it every day for a year and then boom the fort's yeah. there forever yeah, yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. like i forget what it's, it's called it's yeah, so, so fucking cool man <clears throat> uh bell I'd do some magic. I would make some weird alien-esque object just appear somewhere really remotely and watch what happens. Okay. Because people will go nuts and I want to see it happen right in front of me. And it would probably in a, be in America because like that's the best place to do that kind of creepy. In Florida, just to add to the whole Florida. Just, just in Florida as well. In so just have future like, front yard. Yeah, and just have something <laughs> appear out of the ground, totally natural thing that like looks super weird, but is like kind of, it, it's unexplainable and just kind of see what happens. Fair enough. I mean, just, have you a, know, just watch it, just watch the meltdown. Being being the DM of a real life video game is is literally playing God. Like, yeah, like, yeah no, your first person perspective of God, as Ethan put it, is pretty yeah. what it is. Yeah. I would probably end up living just like psyche cat. You are psyche God, but you're also living in the world that you create, kind of thing. That's yeah. kind of the, the vibe. And just make up mental shit happen, like on on the fly, and mess with people. Uh, that's the kind of shit I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next one, and this is uh, if you want to grab a quick little like reference material, uh, you can to form a better ans answer. But if you were a dragon from D and D, which type would you be? So if you want to look up the like you know their behavior or their like Cobalt. traits. Oh, <laughs> I was more thinking of like green dragon, white dragon, but I'll take Cobalt. Cobalt is dragonoid. Yeah, fuck it, I'll take it. Yeah. Why? Because I'm just a little fucking gremlin, dude. Like, got a bad <clears throat> neck for sitting here playing video games. <laughs> you know, take candle. <laughs> You know, take candle. All right. I mean, fuck it. I'll take it. <laughs> also, way less responsibility. Like, yeah. dragons like big and smart, and like they do big things. It's like no, kobold's so unassuming. Like no one's gonna expect anything of a kobold. You just dig. It's like that movie Holes, the Disney movie. <laughs> I hate. Don't just look at me like that. There's a movie yeah. called Holes where they dig holes. Okay. I don't know. It's like I, it's okay, like they're in man, juvenile, they're juvenile delinquents <laughs> or something, and they dig holes. Uh, I'm not that... crazy, okay. Um, I have a little look. Uh... Meanwhile, there's a train passing by Bell's house. Yep. Don't mind the train. 
episode is sponsored by the UK fucking Overground. Overground. <laughs> Great Western. Oh, you're in the northeast. I'm probably no. Wait. <laughs> no, I'm London? not. I'm in you're London. London. <laughs> Very definitely uh, not in the northeast right now. Yeah. Be a bad dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking D and D dragons. Quit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, probably... I'd be a big. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Wait, let's not go. Let's, uh, we don't need to relax, go down that relax. road. Get friendly, guys. Probably some kind of gem dragon. I'm, I'm very. I'm very. Um, some gem obsessed uh, dragon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm very self centered. And in that case, probably. Isn't that all dragons? Though? In, no, in that case, I think red dragons are the biggest like hoarders of shinies and treasures. So probably be a red yeah. dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Okay. I I hoard so so much shit. <clears throat> Like a million different collections of just stuff. Fair enough. Uh, last one. Uh, you one day wake up. This is like the polar opposite of the first question. You one day wake up in an actual D and D game. What would oh, your no. stats be like if you look at yourself in real life? Like based on your <laughs> self. my strength is through the roof. No. Um... <laughs> but if you, you know the, the the six main stats. What would they look like if you were to make yourself into a D and D character? Standard array. Sure. Uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm declaring. Okay. Fair You're enough. declaring a standard array? I'm that epic. Yeah. Okay. Sure, no, sure I would, yeah. And it would be like... Best to worst. Charisma. Intelligence. <laughs> I sound like such a dick right now. <laughs> Charisma. Intelligence. Strength? I'm pretty strong. Like, I'm kind of a strong guy. Sure, man. Wisdom con dex? Probably. <laughs> okay. 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 Fair enough. I th I think. <clears throat> listen, I. Listen, I'm pretty strong. Okay. Sure, man. I can piggyback Piper and Piper's niece simultaneously. I feel like. Neither of them weigh a lot. Well, okay. Piper's niece is three. There you but go. Mm -hmm. there you Piper's go. taller than you. P Piper, them, like, Piper... I, I don't feel like Piper is a very heavy person. Not to me, because I'm so strong. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. Sure, man. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, you fucker. Bell. Uh, charisma, intelligence, wisdom, uh, dexterity, strength, constitution. Highest to lowest. Oh, yeah. your constitution is so... Yeah, but no, no, no. Your constitution is like five. Like... Yeah. Like... Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah, that adds up. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, don't you have Actually, like... no, I'm probably stronger than I am dexterous, so... I remember saying those two. Yeah, I feel like if you try some dex dexy shit, you'll just fucking. Pop I have no proprioception. I don't know where I am in terms of. Yeah, space. plus you'll you'll like you know you'll try something fucking dexy like oh I'm gonna duck away and you're fucking hip for this locate. You know what I mean? Like oh, that's not very mm -hmm. dexterous, is it? Like my my dexterity is very hit and miss. Sometimes I'm really good at it. Sometimes I'm absolutely. <laughs> Bella in a wheelchair is fucking strong. Sometimes you're hyper mobile. <laughs> <to> smile. <laughs> fucking sassy. Bella in her wheelchair is fucking strong. Not fair. I I yeah. Like my 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 upper body strength is pretty okay from like, like uh, crutches and hey, self-propelling wheelchairs. <laughs> Dude, your Joe Swanson impression <laughs> is so <laughs> fucking good. Hey, yeah. Peter, that's pretty good, he's, man. He's strong arms. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Just, um, like, shit. Let me arrive at the hey. uh, the final part of the the Peter. show. I'm going oh. to leave you all with a little teaser for what's to come. I think I need a teaser. You've been exploring Silverkeep and found some secrets already, but there are many more secrets and goodies, as well as dangers that lurk within those walls. Next episode is going to definitely reveal some pivotal information about how deep the Nightweb threat goes. What? Uh -oh. And with that... Oh! Are we going to the Underdark? Underdark! Oh, you... With that, and we'll um, D. see you guys on right. Sunday <laughs> for the next what? episode no. of Dungeon Select. <laughs> don't go anywhere though, because once we wrap, the, once we wrap this up properly, we're gonna play Divinity for a couple hours. So we're mm -hmm. still gonna remain live because we couldn't do Divinity last Monday. 
we won't be able to do Divinity next Monday because I'll be away from home for a day. So, you know, there's that. I won't be home. Um, so we're doing Divinity now for a couple of hours until it's time for uh, Shoot the Shit. So we're going to we're gonna basically replace Bell for Ethan and we're going to play Div. Yep. So we're going to throw on the break screen, get that the shit download. going. And, uh, downgrade. Bit of a downgrade, but you know, yeah. such is life. Downgrade, people will downgrade. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Thanks for watching Dungeon Discourse. See you guys next week for for uh, a new episode. Hope you got, let me know in the Discord, in the DS Discord, but just think of like the, the you know the new segments that I added and the more like I feel like it's a little more organized now as well. It's like you know we're not going off on random like tangents. I'm trying to like keep it somewhat keep it streamlined. On the rails. Keep it keep it on the rails. Yeah. So uh, let me know what you guys think. In the Discord, there's a discussion channel under the Dungeon Discourse category. So if you want to discuss. Want to have your discourse in there about the new the new segments, the, the format, and all that good stuff. I'd be glad to hear your feedback. And if you have any suggestions for cool segments that are D&D related that I can add in, or fun D&D related like games that we can play on the show, fucking chuck them in there. I'm always looking for ideas, so hit me up, or hit us up. Thanks for watching, y'all, and it's time for Divinity. Peace out, Bell. Bye. Fuck out. Yeah, I'm probably just going to call the Divinity group. Uh, we're going to yeah. keep going on break and set the shit up. You'll be hearing our voices for a little bit, and then I'm going to deafen and quickly go for, for a bathroom break and all that stuff. Bye-bye! Bye! Well, you know, we'll be back. We'll be back. We're Except still here. Bye, Belle. I went. Bye, Belle. Bye. Du -du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. You gone? Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Du -du 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 -dum. Now slowly, like, fade out. Just like... Bum, bum.